I'm out here with uh, some of the staff from the Scottish Gallery and it's about 10 days till the new Queen's Ferry crossing over here opens and I'm out here looking for some new angles to draw the bridge once it's been completed. I've been drawing the Queen's Ferry crossing since it was just three stumps of towers rising up out of the water in 2014 and now here in 2017 all the three triangles of cables have joined together and they crisscross like tendons keeping that wonderful cable stayed tension of the bridge together. Um, it's going to be very exciting to cross it when it's opened on the 4th of September but no less exciting I think is crossing the other two bridges um, the fourth the fourth road bridge as you can see is absolutely heaving with traffic and that rumble of traffic is going to change and it's going to shift left and shift westward to the new crossing um, it's going to be a huge time of transition and kind of marks Scotland out as a place of change, of constant change and growth. Um, and it's going to be exciting to see how it affects all the communities on both sides of the Firth of Forth. But one of the amazing things about seeing the three bridges in one view is you're suddenly aware of the pattern of three two, three, like a kind of rhythm running down the, the estuary. And the original crossing over the fourth was, of course, the rail bridge over there. And it's got three separate cantilevers. And it's a cantilever principle which has been used to create it. That's engineering principle. Of course, that was in the 19th century. And in the 20th century, we've got the road bridge which is one of the longest suspension bridges in the world at the time it was built and that of course has got the two towers and then now we're back to three sections again with the cable stayed principle which has been used so successfully in the 21st century so we have three centuries three bridges and three different engineering principles which is really quite beautiful This single line here represents the South Tower and although it looks like such a simple, elegant stretch of concrete, it represents a huge feat of engineering and not only did they build one but they built two, they built three and here I am on the south side of the fourth estuary looking across and you can see how they just disappear into perspective over about a mile and a half and it's just a case of realizing from this angle how much the elevation rises up to the middle and then drops back down to Fife which is over here it's a huge body of water and I remember in 2014 looking out from the existing road bridge from the pedestrian lanes and cycle lanes and looking at this empty stretch of the fourth estuary and just thinking it's going to be amazing that they're actually going to join these two bodies of land joining um, Midlothian to Fife and here they are just 10 days away and they've actually done it. Um, you can't see them now but they've taken them away but at the back of each of these for all the time for the past three or four years has been one of the longest cranes or the three tallest freestanding cranes in the world and these cranes were working on the building of this and you see I'm so used to drawing it as a building site I'm actually building the cranes in but of course they're not there anymore it's quite strange and I actually created um, an etching called South Tower Yellow Crane and this is at a point when these were little gaps here so I'm sort of already 
drawing into the past but for most new visitors to this country they're going to or children growing up they're just going to look at this bridge and it's going to look like it was always just like it is now except with traffic of course Depending on the angle of the light, the cables coming off like, like a harp string, a clarsa string, either disappear into the clouds or are picked out by the sunlight as it plays across. And today, at this time of day, all the south angled downward cables are catching the light and the north ones are disappearing and it changes minute by minute, second by second, depending on which way the light and the pattern of light and air is moving across it. Um, here I am in Port Edgar and uh, I spent quite a lot of time over the past few years down here uh, partly because you can get so close to the new bridge as it's been built um, and I've had a really positive relationship with Port Edgar Sailing Club in fact there's a little red boat over there which is the safety boat for the sailing club and um, three members of the sailing uh, club took me out and took me on a ride around all the towers of the new bridge and I was able to draw the um, three towers for my exhibition Anatomy of Haste and it was one of the final works that I managed to do and um, of course when you're out at sea it's a little choppy so I worked on birch panels directly on them and then worked and completed them in the studio. Um, as you can see there's some very beautiful and interesting foreground like the listed crane here which is from 1964 the Port Edgar crane on the end of this central uh, pier and um, it's of course a very very busy little marina um, so I'm just gonna take a quick drawing of this and uh, you'll hear in the background the roar of the traffic from the fourth road bridge and all of that roar in 10 days time is going to transform transfer over to the new bridge so looking at it now it's just got a few little JCBs stuck on the top of the tower I have no idea how they're going to get that down, but I expect they know. Um, and you just see a few bits of um, kit and a few little safety vehicles and everything. And it's just quite strange to think that that's going to be up and running so soon. You know, the thing with drawing that is really really different from photography is that if I was taking a photograph of this you just take the, the camera theoretically captures everything but it doesn't always capture your attention and when you're drawing you have to actually plot everything that is in front of you and as I draw I can look over and I not only see the boats and the cranes and the foreground and the old disused pier but I also clock that that enormous boom crane in the distance on the five side is Recythe and so much of this bridge was actually constructed over there with imported Chinese steel and which sailed from China down the fourth landed in Recythe was constructed and then was floated out and craned into place onto the bridge so you know like drawing forces you to really notice all of these things every single detail and it's kind of why however much photography i and i use i will always draw because it helps you observe how things work
sometimes when you draw a bridge like this, especially when it's being built, it's a bit like drawing into the future. And I always say about my drawings, I'm kind of interested in the recent past and soon the construction of this bridge is going to move into the recent past and what I'm drawing is almost the idea of it actually being a bridge rather than a very long tall structure or a tall, long tall construction site which is kind of what it's been for the last few years. And every single person that looks at the bridge sees it as something else depending on what it means to them. So, you know, as an artist, I absolutely do not own any kind of truth about the bridge. It's just that maybe I take a little bit longer to look at it, give it a little bit more time. I got these cables completely wrong. I need a ruler almost because they are so absolutely straight. I don't think they even blow about in the wind because just like tendons they are under tension. But hey little here's a little JCB. Kind of fond of them. Okay I think I'm there. <laughs> <laughs>